What's up guys, Gromouse here, back at you with another Cutter Configs video before I take my 10 cobs and set them up and we'll get down to growing some herb with them. Um, but this one last video, I wanna let you guys know, these heat sinks are back in stock. There were a thousand of them yesterday. There's 776 of them today. So don't screw around on this deal. They're 23 bucks US dollars listed on the website. They come down to $21.08 if you use the discount cut and roll. That's C-U-T, one T and roll, all one word. So use that at checkout. So for this little build, we're gonna be utilizing the driver that runs five cobs and we're going to run all five cobs so we're using four uh, pieces of angled aluminum here that are 24 inches each because that's the size that's available pre-cut now i would actually recommend going 26 or 28 inches because you see here i've got these mounted at 22 inches off the center um, and it's not going to be enough to get a perfect spread that you guys are looking for for your three by three or one meter by one meter space. So uh, get a little longer bars than I did in this video, and I didn't realize it till at the end when I took all the par readings. So stay tuned to the end of the video. I'm gonna show you guys the par readings at about 16 inches, which is about where you're gonna wanna run this from your flowering, uh, from your canopy and flowering. So after you've got three heat sinks mounted to one bar and two heat sinks mounted to the other, just simply cross the bars and mark where they overlap. Uh, mark it on all four sides. What you're going to want to do is take a Dremel tool or a hacksaw and notch out these little corners. You don't cut all the way through the angle. You just you cut about halfway down, notch it out. And if you have a Dremel, you can make the cross cut. I just used a plier and just kind of went back and forth until it ripped out. Now, this is 16th inch angled aluminum, and it's a little thin and floppy for a build that I would want to hang in my room. So again, use that eighth inch thick. Now, where they overlap, mark them for your drill holes, and you're gonna drill four holes. Eighth inch drill bit works pretty good for me, uh, which will fit a 6-32 nut and bolt from Lowe's or Home Depot. I'm gonna use rivets here because I've invested in this little rivet gun. Like I mentioned in the part one cutter configs, you can get a rivet gun from Harbor Freight for five bucks if you're gonna be building a few of these things. Now wiring it up is the same principle as in the part one video, which is very detailed, almost 20 minutes long, and shows you everything you're gonna need to know about assembling the cobs and wiring them. But essentially, I started with one cob on the outer perimeter and just went positive, negative, positive, negative all the way around, leaving me with two terminals, a positive and the negative that's gonna to attach to the driver. Now this wire that I'm using here is very similar to the wire that's gonna be coming with the cutter kits now. I mentioned in the first video, you're gonna to need to source some connectors. Um, they're coming with connectors too. They're coming with these Wago style connectors, which are tools free. Uh, you just stick your positive in one uh, from the driver and the positive from the LED and you push down on the lever and it's done. No soldering, no crimping, you know, none of that stuff. So uh, it will come with some, some Wago connectors now. So it'll be a little easier for you guys to assemble. And for this build, I'm going to leave the driver remote. Um, so if you want a remote driver to mount outside of your tent or outside of your room, make sure to leave a little bit of extra wire lead coming off those final cops. You can go about eight to 10 feet with the 14 gauge that's included or 18 gauge rather. Um, so I've got it hung up here over this piece of poster board. It's roughly three by three. It's actually slightly smaller than three by three. And each of the grids is a foot by a foot. 269 watts at the wall. That's due to this driver putting out more like 1430 milliamps. So you get a little more bang for the buck. Um, so I've just gone around and taken some par measurements. Um, I tried to keep the sensor straight up um, because it is capable of, of measuring those low angles. But I did also angle it just to kind of see what parts of the plant that were angled towards the light were getting. So I will report here in just a second the actual measurements with the par sensor straight up all the way out to a four by four. Even though this isn't really enough for a four by four, um, you can see here, got a kind of a hot spot in the center, 1059 par um, going out to 880s at the one foot, 700 par roughly out at the two foot perimeter. And you're getting about 200 par out at three by three. Now, like I said, if you spread these cobs out just slightly, it's really gonna help average everything out. I think putting that center cob in the middle uh, just created a little bit too much of a hot spot. So that was just on me for uh, you know my configuration. Uh, a couple inches on either side is gonna make a dramatic difference. But um, I'm actually pretty impressed with these numbers, you know, for a five cob kit that is comparable, slightly more expensive, but comparable in price to a ceramic metal halide. Um, I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna do great for a three by three up to a one meter by one meter, 
you could potentially do it in a four by four if you're really budget limited, but it's not optimal for a four by four, but you will get some light. Now, like I said, this is 16 inches from the reflector's edge to the sensor or 18 inches from the actual cob itself to the sensor. Some of you may choose to run 24. I think that's a little too high for me personally. I like 16 inches roughly. Um, so if you're a customer for a single kit with five cobs like this, chances are you're probably going to be a customer for a ceramic metal halide. Now, a 315 ceramic metal halide pulls 348 watts at the wall. Okay, that's due to just the losses that you get in the driver since, you know, it is a magnetic driver that runs those things. Now, you may be able to get up to 45% efficient with a brand new bulb and a brand new setup with a really nice ceramic metal halide bulb. But uh, over the course of six months to a year, you're going to be running about an average efficiency of 42% uh, based on just the age of the bulb, which is about 146 par watts. These are just rough numbers, not taking into account driver or ballast losses or reflector losses in either fixture. Uh, with this five cob setup at 269 watts at the wall, 56% efficient, you're going to be getting 156 par watts. That means 150 of those watts are going to be going towards creating photons in the par range. So as you can see here, for 79 watts less, approximately the same price, this thing's going to beat out a ceramic metal halide. That's just the data. That's just the science. Um, now, this par map here is from Grower's House. You can do some more research at grow, Grower's House. This is at 24 inches. My measurements are at like 16, 18 inches. So uh, it's not apples to apples there. But um, I can tell you guys, I've run the numbers a bunch of times. And uh, whether you go with this kit or not, DIY and cobs are just going to be the way to go. So thanks for watching. And um, I'll have another video where I assemble my two kits with 10 cobs over a four by four. I'll show you that configuration and then we'll lead right into getting to uh, grow and see what it's actually capable of uh, in a garden. So thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time.